It was an eight-week program uh, where six of those weeks uh, we had uh, Chip Staley coming in and doing training about uh, the neuroscience, about empathy, about how to interview, about navigating the technology. Um, and that was uh, the first five to six weeks. After that, we developed our interview questions and we conducted interviews. Uh, by we, I mean the students conducted interviews with the memory care patients, uh, all via Zoom. We're still doing COVID and hopefully maybe next year we could do it again and do it in person. Um, but they conducted interviews that ran, you know, maybe anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes where they tried to suss out um, what kind of music might be the right kind of music to, to, to touch that person. And so through these conversations, we were then able to develop playlists um, to put that stuff on SD cards, to put the SD cards in, in uh, elderly, friendly MP3 players with big buttons and with comfortable earphones. And, uh, and then they, these were delivered via the mail, but they were delivered uh, yesterday. I know how big uh, a role music plays in my life and knowing that I could help someone who's maybe struggling with memory um, reconnect with their past experiences and with something that's really important to them, which is music, and share in this experience that uh, music brings us. Originally, when we started this project, I thought that dementia, you would automate, when you lost your memories, you wouldn't be able to get them back or it'd be difficult to re regain those memories. However, when we interviewed our elderly person, um, we found out that when we talked about certain topics, like topics about his grandson, he was able to, to give us like continuous conversations about his grandson. And adding on to what Jan said, there's not just one type of dementia, there's many, um, and it's like an umbrella, so dementia is on the top, and then there's like Alzheimer's and different types underneath, and there's many factors that can help you um, gain the memory back, like listening to music that you used to have as you were a kid or as a teenager. Did you feel like that as they talk to you, a developing sense of trust that maybe you didn't expect? Yeah, so um, like they talked earlier about how um, sometimes they may not be as open just because they have dementia. And um, for me, it really wasn't that way. It was like they were very open and um, conscious and it was just a great experience. It was also really cool to see uh, the impact we had um, I think uh, Mr. Mitchell will presumably continue to enjoy his big uh, playlist. Um, and it was just really neat to see how much he uh, uh, enjoyed what, what he was hearing. Um, that he, he kind of was able to, um, I think, listen to some music he hadn't heard in a long time and really kind of reconnect to, to his past and to his childhood. I have a family friend that actually is dealing with Alzheimer's right now. And I'm seeing how much of an effect it has on him because um, personally we're having to take care of his child sometimes, so like we'll pick him up from school. Um, and the wife of the family friend, he's, she's um, just personally going through a lot, and so I kind of want to see what it would be like from that perspective of like what she's dealing with, um, just because we're so close with them and I know how much this is affecting them right now. What was the growth in the learning that you saw in your students in this process? So part of that growth is growing through, one, understanding how ugly of a disease uh, that can be. Uh, another is understanding, um, well, a little bit of the neuroscience, and there's value there too, but the big one is just the empathy. You know, in the conversation, we watched a documentary, this is maybe three, four weeks ago, um, the uh, Honor Society students who were involved in this project, we hung out after school, pop popcorn, we watched the Alive Inside documentary, which I highly recommend to everybody. Watch the Alive Inside documentary, and uh, it's a bit of a tearjerker. I, I stood in the back, I didn't want him to see me, <laughs> you know, but you can you hear some sniffles in the room as well. And so that growing in that empathy and growing in that understanding what families are going through when they have grandma or an aunt or an uncle who are struggling in this way, um, and then seeing the power of what can be done <laughs> with a simple MP3 player and some Ray Charles.